Today's video is all about photo editing with special effects. I'm gonna show you this artificial intelligence powered software called Luminar AI that has just been released and promises to assist you in photo editing, especially in more complicated tasks. So we've been hearing about sky replacements, adding planets, birds and all sorts of stuff, but it's much more than that, especially in the portraits realm. This video is not sponsored, so what you get here is my honest opinion about who is it for, if anyone at all. Ciao, I'm Henry, and welcome to another episode of our Tech Talks. So, this video is organized in chapters. If you're interested in some specific topic, you can check them in the description below, or you can just hover your mouse over the timeline and skip directly to it. So, today I'm going to be introducing you to this software and I'm going to show you what is it capable of. I'm going to compare it to its main competitors regarding features and price, and I'm going to answer questions sent by you on Instagram. Skylum is the company responsible for making this new photo editor called Luminar AI, just recently released in December 2020, and it features some special artificial intelligence, as the name implies properly, to make a software that understands the picture, not only by pixels and color and luminosity, but also by what is it about, if it's a portrait, if it's a landscape, and offers you some features that can make it much, much faster to do more complicated tasks, like for example, sky replacements, adding objects, maybe some skin retouching. There are two softwares called Luminar. One is called Luminar 4 and the other one is called Luminar AI. AI is the newest version of Luminar and they changed it to make it really, really clear that it's totally focused on artificial intelligence. Quick tip, I don't know if by the time you're watching this video, Skyrim will have added already the link to download the free trial of Luminar AI, but when I checked, I just couldn't find it anywhere. So here I got it installed, I'll just open it, that you can add pictures to your catalog. So I'm just gonna go over here to the plus sign, and I'm gonna add a folder with images. You can also add individual images as you prefer. And that is it. So after adding the folder with the pictures, they are now inside our catalog. First, we got the templates tab, in which it's gonna use artificial intelligence to understand what the picture is about, and suggest us some templates or some sort of filters for you to apply on the picture already, right from the start. So let's just try Easy Landscapes and it gives us some options here that you can just go clicking and it's gonna edit the picture according to that preset. And down here you can decide how strong do you want this filter to be. Okay, so once we are satisfied with what we did here, we can just go along to the next tab which is called Edit. And in the first panel of this part you're gonna find the Essentials, which is more or less what you would find on Lightroom meaning you can change any kind of exposure, shadows, highlights, you can change the details. And this is quite intuitive. So you can just crop it to be 16 by nine, for example, and just hit enter and it's gonna be applied to the image. We've got the curves and we got also the RGB curves inside here. We got also some of these tabs that are identified already with the AI written, which clearly identify to us that they are using some sort of artificial intelligence to apply this effect. So accent is gonna give it a little bit of pop to this image and Sky Enhancer is gonna try to enhance what it considers to be the sky. For the others, we have like Structure, which works a little bit like the Clarity on Lightroom. But the core of this software is in the second panel here, which is called the Creative Panel. And the first item is already Sky, also boosted by the artificial intelligence. So you can see that it replaces automatically the sky behind the pyramids there. It didn't do a perfect job, also because the pyramids, they, they had some haze in front of them, but we can always adjust the masking that it's doing. You can also adjust the blending of the horizon. We can also change the position of the horizon so we can level it up a little bit. We can try to adjust a little bit the lighting of the scene according to the sky that we chose. And also for the masking, we got the sky global slider here that we can use to try to do small adjustments that if we reduce it a little bit, we can see that now that spot on the pyramid up here that was being taken by clouds, now it's not anymore. So it's pretty good already. And we can flip it around. We can add some haze and we can also change the exposure. So the idea is the software is giving us a lot of control about how is this going to blend in with our picture. But it still offers you the possibility to do it as fake as you want it. So like for example, you can go to Augmented Sky, which is the second panel, and you can just choose to include some other stuff that you want, like aurora, balloon, bird, clouds, extra clouds if you want, eagles, fireworks, giraffes, lightning, you know, maybe some mountain. Let's see what it does to the image. <laughs> okay, this looks very, very fake. Okay, now let's go back and let's just add some birds to this image. Okay, this looks about right. They are a little bit too big. Let's make them quite smaller. Let's just put them. So next up is the Atmosphere AI. And here you can add a little bit of haze, fog, layered fog, whatever you like. So let's add a little bit of haze just to see how it looks. 
and it begins with the amount in zero and you can just pull up and you can see that it adds just that small layer of haze on the base of the pyramids that actually look pretty cool in this picture. We can add more drama, we can add a little bit more mystical vibe to it and even some glow if you will. Now let's work through this balloon shot and I'll just use this clean light template here and let's go to the edit. Okay, so it's looking pretty cool and we did it in what? Some seconds was so easy to do. Let's check out this other picture here, in which we have these more complicated pillars in front and I just want to see, just messed perfectly around the pillars around here. Adding the sun rays, we can change the length, penetration, the light is coming from the left and it's something that you could get with your camera if the sun was in the right position. So let's try this one also including some objects on the background. So this shot was definitely made with a very wide lens and it just doesn't make any sense to see the balloon in this perspective. So let's just replace it with something that can be a little bit more believable. Fireworks in this case, already a lot better. All right, let's take a look at this one. And since you can see where the sun rays are coming from in the middle of these clouds here, it just doesn't make any sense in this image to have this sky. Okay, this looks quite good. For this one, we definitely have to work a little bit on the masking because we can see the clouds a little bit through this structure here. To change that, you just have to click up here and you're gonna see the paint mask. And you can just click show mask and you can erase. Okay, so now it looks way, way, way better. Again, with just a couple of clicks. And now on for the portrait part. And for this one, let's begin with the easiest one, which is a straight on portrait like this. Very clear, very bright, perfectly in focus. And we can see that the software already decided to suggest us some templates for portraits. I wanna keep the color and I'm just gonna choose here. Close ups and let's see, brush. Okay, so maybe let's go with this brush up. Let's see the before and after. So you can see that it already added some effects on top of the face, like brightening up a little bit, already softened the skin a little bit. So let's keep this one. Let's just reduce it a tiny bit here and go to the portrait part that we didn't change anything yet. So first of all, we got face AI and this is gonna allow us to change the light on the face and we can also slim the face. So we can make the person look a little bit thinner or actually this can also be used to correct the distortion in some lenses. And the next panel is the eyes panel. And this is very interesting because the software can recognize so easily what are the eyes of the subject. So let's say here, I wanna change the eyes to green and it, boom, does it perfectly, exactly spot on on the eyes. You can add some flare, that is this glow around the iris. We can enlarge the eyes, which in this case probably wasn't necessary at all. But okay, let's make it bigger just for the sake of this video. We can widen the eyes if we want, remove red eyes, we can remove the dark circles around the, the eyes. So make the person look like it slept much more than it actually has and improve eyebrows. So next up is the mouth and you can change the saturation of the lips, you can change the redness. And the most interesting here is the teeth whitening that does a perfect selection of the teeth that is very, very clear, even too much a little bit. But okay, so next up is the skin and the skin smoother works really strong if you go up to the 100%, so it looks a little bit plasticky. So you, ha you have to find the perfect tune here. So actually, let's leave it here about the middle. And the shine removal I found was very interesting because since sometimes you have the light too much on the subject, so this really helps with smoothing out this transition between the different tones of the skin. And here we have skin defects removal, where it really cleans up the skin in the before and after. For this next panel, let's use this picture here because it's a body AI panel. And what it allows us to do is to change the shape of the body so you can go thinner or you can go a little bit more chubby. Because you can see that the fridge here on the back kind of like distorts along with the body a little bit, but you have to do it a little bit less. So it looks a bit more believable now since I have this gelato sandwich in my hands. Add some high key flare. Yeah, perfectly identifies where are the eyes again, widen the teeth. One other thing that I found out using this picture here is that when you use the skin smoothener, it kind of like irons your clothes also, which in this case I probably needed. So for the next test, I wanted to do something in which we have more than one face at the same time. So face light actually is lighting up the face of the tree very, very precisely. So it's intelligence already detected that there are three people in this picture and it's gonna affect all of them at the same time. 
So yeah, overall I'm quite impressed that it actually detected just the faces that were actually a part of the picture and didn't change anything on the other people. Okay, so what if you already have a process about developing your pictures, either using it through Lightroom or coming through Camera Raw and then entering Photoshop? How can you add Skyloom and Luminar inside your workflow? They have not only the software, like as a standalone software, but they have also the plugin for you to install inside Photoshop and inside Lightroom. So right here we're inside Photoshop and I just imported one of the raw images and didn't do anything inside Camera Raw and now I'm in the main panel of Photoshop. And if you go up to Filter, Skyloom software, it's down here now, it was added by the installation software. But let's just see what happens when you click Luminar AI, which is the newest one. And now we got it inside Luminar AI, just like we opened directly on it. So let's just do some crazy change. Okay, perfect. So just shows something at random like this. I'm just gonna click apply. It's already exporting this picture and it's gonna bring it back to Photoshop. And then all the effects that we did on Luminar are now applied to the image and we're here back on Photoshop just like it was a normal filter. If you want to change something on this edit, you also have the possibility of clicking here on the side where you have the settings panel, and then it's going to throw you back to Luminar and keep this workflow between the, both softwares like that. Okay, so let's take this image inside Luminar and let's see how long it takes for us to do a basic editing of this portrait. Okay, apply. And boom, we're back inside Photoshop in just this amount of time. One last part inside Luminar that I forgot to mention was this Pro tab down here. And here you can change the optics, so correct the distortion of lenses, so you can do dodging and burning, and you can also use the clone and stamp. I did the speed test, either for importing and exporting the pictures. And for importing, it was a little bit strange. I never could figure out exactly if the pictures had finished importing or not, because as you can see, it loaded all of them into the gallery, but at the same time, the thumbnails weren't loading. And even after waiting a long time, still I would scroll and I would see some of the black uh, squares and it would take some time before the thumbnails would appear. And when I went back, actually the first ones, the thumbnails had appeared already, they were gone and then I had to wait again. After some time, it managed to import all of the pictures and I could see all of the thumbnails at once. Regarding exporting, I just exported the nine pictures that we edited together, just like you saw them with all those changes we made. And it took two minutes, 29 seconds to export them all. So what I did was that I imported the raw files again on Lightroom and I did just a basic edit. I applied a preset to all of them that changed just some things like luminosity, curves and colors. And it took exactly 15 seconds only to export. So I thought it wasn't a really fair comparison. So I went back, I cleaned all the changes that we had made and I just applied some changes in luminosity, this more or less the same things I did on Lightroom, applied to all of the pictures and retried to export. And this time it took one minute and 12 seconds. It's still much slower than Lightroom, but if you have just this amount of pictures, it wouldn't make that much of a difference. Okay, so now let's see what options we have. What are the softwares available in the market right now? How much they cost for us to be able to decide which one suits us best. So Luminar AI comes at 79 euro for one license. There are some other options that include some other things, like for example, the stack of uh, different models and presets in Aurora HDR, which is another software they have. As for Adobe, it's a little bit different. They have a subscription-based system. So you have to pay 12 euro per month to have the photography package that includes Lightroom and Photoshop. Other options would be Capture One, which is another very famous photo editor and that has also some different kind of subscription-based plans in which you can pay only 11 euro per month but it only allows you to edit pictures from a specific brand of camera. Or if you pay 24 euro per month, you can edit whatever you want. And now for the part in which I tell you which softwares you can use for free. So this is Darktable. It's used for creating a catalog with your pictures. You can rate your pictures and you can do all the basic edit inside of it. For sure, it's not as powerful as Lightroom or Luminar. The refinement and the quality of the image is much better on the other ones. If you're not willing to spend money right now, to buy a software, it's a very interesting one for you to begin with. And the other one that is supposed to replace Photoshop is called GIMP. This is a very good option. So Luminar is the one in which you have to pay upfront the biggest amount. One year using the Adobe package, you're gonna spend 144 euro, which is exactly the same amount you're gonna spend if you use Luminar for two years, since the first year is 79, but to renew it adds up to exactly 144. Capture One is gonna cost more or less the same as the Adobe package if you use it just for one brand of photo camera, but if you use it for all cameras, then it's gonna cost actually double. 
And again, just thinking about price, Dark Table plus GIMP is the best option by far because they cost just zero euro. Two quick notes about the Adobe package here. First is that it allows you to install in three different computers and use it simultaneously in two of them. So it's a little bit different than Luminar in this sense. And second applies if you're a student or a teacher. There's a special package that offers all applications inside the Creative Cloud Suite in which you can pay only 19 euro to have all of them. And this includes video editing software, just like Premiere and After Effects, includes all the design softwares, and of course, also Photoshop and Lightroom. Two additional comments for Luminar. They also offer some sort of subscription that you can pay annually and that you can have some extra content to have something different from what the software offers right when you download it. So this answers the question about like, what if everybody starts editing all the pictures with the same skies and the same birds and the same everything? So they're gonna offer to you some new assets that you can use in your pictures. But anyway, you can still import whatever you want inside the software if you download the Sky or if you download whatever. Another thing is that they promised for 2021 to deliver Sky AI 2.0, so a better and renovated version that will also include the support for reflections on water. If you change the sky, then it's gonna be a little bit more realistic. And also the bokeh AI that is gonna allow you to have some really realistic out of focus using artificial intelligence. Okay, so to round it up, who is it for? So, if you're an absolute beginner, it's a very interesting option because the software is very intuitive and also offers more or less all the controls that you're gonna get in other softwares about luminosity and everything. And you're still gonna have to learn how to use them. Otherwise, you're just gonna be pushing sliders around and you're not gonna get the results that you're expecting, but it can be really good. Also, if you're on a budget and you don't want to spend that much on a year basis on other softwares, and also if you decide later to migrate to something else like Adobe, for example, you'll still be able to use the plugin from the Luminar you own. Now, what about if you're an amateur photographer and you're looking for something a little bit more professional to edit your pictures? It's going to depend on how much control and how much you're going to want to get involved properly in the editing process. If you want something to be quick and efficient, yeah, that's the way to go. If you want something with a little bit more control, I'd consider other options. Now, what about if you're a professional or an advanced editor? So I don't think right now is the moment to migrate from something else to Luminar. It can be quite interesting and it can for sure speed up your process, especially with the plugins. So I can really imagine someone that does a lot of portraits, does photo shoots or does weddings or something like that, editing their pictures in their normal way and then going for Luminar just for those special selects from their clients to deliver those with some special skin treatment, with some changes to the eyes. Now, if you're comfortable with actions on Photoshop, for example, you already have a lot of these things automated, but still you have to do the selections. You still have to tell the software where exactly the change needs to be done when Luminar already figures that out for you. All right, guys, that's all for today. If you enjoyed and you learned what you wanted, please like this video, share it, and subscribe for more content like this. See you next time. Ciao, ciao.